Uh, well, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining us for this uh, uh, one in a series of, um, of interview chats on the Power Platform Advantage in EHS. Um, today, we're very happy to have two esteemed guests with us today. Uh, one is Ryan Cunningham, the, the product, the global product lead for Power Platform, um, and Trevor Nimgears, uh, the CEO uh, for iTrack 365, um, an EHS solution that's built on the Power Platform. Um, and so today, we, we, you know, we wanted to, to get Ryan's perspective and Trevor's perspective on how companies and organizations today are leveraging the Power Platform uh, to drive real innovations in their industries and in their companies. And just that, as a way to start off, um, Ryan, you know, you've been, you know, in the beginning of bringing Power Platform alive. You know, what's what's the vision for? What's your vision for Power Platform? And how are you starting to see this as being a catalyst for you know citizen and pro developer movements? Uh, absolutely. So uh, first of all, thanks for the opportunity and for having me on. It's great to be with you guys today and uh, chat about this stuff. It's uh, it's really nice to to sort of lift our heads up from uh, building software all day long and have a discussion <laughs> about where we're going and what it means. Um, uh, it, look, you know, we've we've been uh, on a on a path for a while, and and I would argue that that this has really been a Microsoft ambition for a very long time, even before, uh, you know, Power Platform sort of became the next iteration or incarnation of it. Uh, but but to really continue to uh, do two converging things. One is is make people who understand their jobs and their businesses more effective and productive. Um, and the other is to make software developers and engineers more effective and productive and and, and build more stuff. And, and what's really exciting about Power Platform is the chance to it, it really, for the first time, bring those two worlds together in, in a really fundamental way. Uh, because we just, we have a lot more software to build then present course and speed is going to get us there. All things, all things constant. Um, you know, and, and if you go look at just the, uh, you know, digital transformation is is nice to talk about on a conference stage. <laughs> when you go get down into the the bread and butter, the nitty gritty of of what it means to take every single business process um, inside a company. You know, every single Excel spreadsheet and piece of paper and and email chain and uh, you do this and I do that type of understanding. Every legacy tool, every one off, and really bring it into a a modern world. Um, you know, that's a lot of work to do and, and just business as usual isn't going to get there. And so, you know, really, really the fundamental thesis of Power Platform is change the economics of delivering software, make, you know, existing professionals more productive and change the relationship with business people who are experts, you know, maybe not in scaled cloud software, but are experts in what it means to, to run a safe manufacturing process, what it means to, to run an efficient airport, or what it means to run a global public health campaign, whatever it is, right? And um, and so for, for us, the chance to sort of change that relationship really is the vision. Uh, you know, we're not going to turn everybody into a software developer. Uh, and, and, you know, for, for a long time, that's been sort of the push in the industry you know let's let's put a coding class in every college major um uh, and and look our progress against that has actually been pretty slow uh because it turns out not everybody wants to write code and 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 frankly as an economy we still need doctors and lawyers and teachers and process experts and mechanical engineers and, and sheet metal experts and and whatnot right we don't need everybody to to be a coder um but we can get everybody more fluent in what it means to to build and evolve software and uh, that's part of the vision is really bring low code fluency to everybody, um, you know, including existing technologists. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that that vision was is, is one of the things that was so compelling, even, um, you know, back in the day when it was called XRM. Sure. Uh, and now as we start to, you know, develop that further and further in the power platform and, and, and the developments there, um, you're starting to see even ISVs emerging, you know, to come and solve, you know, big problems for businesses in certain areas. And so that brings me to Trevor, you know, you, know, you essentially built iTrack 365 from the ground up on Power Platform. Um, some would say you're betting the farm on Power Platform. Um, why did you do so? And, and how do you see, you know, iTrack 365's vision connecting into the vision that Ryan was kind of explaining above? Yeah, I, I think that... Um one of the things we bet on this a long time ago first of all we we started before it was known as a power platform back when it was in the days of of xrm and we didn't really know but we certainly had a hope and a and a, a desire that microsoft would take it the path that they have 
Um, but as we've evolved that forward, really what we started to see is within our customer base, um, customers would look at their application stack and they would say, what do we already have? When they found a business problem, they'd say, what do we already have? And they would want to say, take what I have and enhance it and, and, and extend the investment of that. And that's what we really liked about, you know, the, the power platform and, and what began as XRM is, you know, th this technology and, and what became part of the cloud platform of Microsoft is that when we had these building blocks on top of it, we weren't an extension that sat somewhere outside of their environment. We were an extension to their environment. And that was, you know, everything from their existing workflows to, you know, the existing tools like, you know, even Microsoft Teams and things like that, making all of those investments just go farther. And the other part of that that's really important is that's where their users live all day long. They're in Excel, they're in Outlook, they're in those places. And if you give them additional functionality, we don't want their work to be sitting out there somewhere that they have to go find the place where they need to input data. We want to do it where they naturally occur and, uh, you know, occur and or use their, you know, their, their uh, capabilities to do their job. Um, so that's that's part of the fundamental pieces. The other part is, you know, balancing this piece between, you know, citizen development that Ryan was talking about and pro development. And I, I really like what you said, Ryan, to, to understand that at one time the, the world kind of seemed like, hey, everybody's going to be a developer. Well, no, no, that doesn't make sense. Um, you know, and development is a very unique skill that, you know, companies and, and when you're building large enterprise systems, you need a combination of different skill sets to come into that. People who understand process, people who can adapt and understand what's happening in that sheet metal factory and what yeah. needs to change and how the process needs to flow but then you also may need a, a data analyst on the other side that's looking and going, hey, I need this data to be available across, you know, uh, 15 different departments and right up to the board level and summarized and secured and all of those kind of things. So it's it's those combination of different things that I think start to play into it. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I definitely noticed that, too, like, you know, when I was on the Microsoft side and encouraging ISVs to build on, on the Dynamics platform at the time. Um, and then after leaving Microsoft and joining an ISV that hadn't done so, um, one of the things I started to re in the EHS space as well, uh, one of the things I started to realize is that when I was talking to more and more customers, you know, we were we had this whole value proposition you know, to our customers to say, hey, you know, get off of Excel, get off of, you know, um, you know, these commonly available tools that you're using today in house systems and move to a commercial software system, like get off the spreadsheets and, 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 and put the big boy pants on. That was kind of like the messaging that we had. Right. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, uh, to your point, Trevor, like these customers are living and breathing in these applications every single day. And we were basically asking them to add another application to their universe and to their user experience and, and, and support it and use it and so forth. And that was often the Achilles heel. Um, and so the, the first kind of area of questions I have for you guys is really around this concept of connected application ecosystems, right? And, and really, you know, taking the customer's experience in mind the applications they use and really connecting into that. And, you know, one of the areas which is very compelling um, about the Power Platform um, is that common data model, the dataverse capability. Um, and Ryan, I mean, you, you've speaking ex extensively about this capability, but can you give us like examples of how you're seeing customers, you know, leveraging the Power Platform, the dataverse capability to build that connectedness in a more differentiated way? Yeah, hundred percent. I, I think it, it kind of comes back to the core truth that no business app is created or introduced in a vacuum. <laughs> we we all have a lot of systems and processes already. Um, and any company that's been operating for any stretch of time, you know, uh, generally already has some solution uh, or more six solutions for things like CRM and ERP and and your basic sort of business process applications. Um, however, you know, a lot of times uh, those are not nearly enough for what humans need to do. And, and often a, a human needs to use many of them at a time or at least leverage information from many of them at a time. Um, and so that, you know, a classic approach in the business applications world for for traditional point solution vendors is to is to sort of pretend that those other systems don't exist and just focus on trying to get data into one uh, silo, right? And that just exacerbates this problem of of disparate monoliths. And 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 that is one I think of the advantages of approaching this problem 
uh, as a platform company from a Microsoft perspective, as opposed to um, uh, you know purely as as just a fully vertically integrated point solution, uh, which is that you know we 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 grew up in this ecosystem of diversity, right? And we embrace it and, and we realize that actually the world gets better and actually solutions that are built on a common set of connectivity um, and common set of definitions are more useful because they're integrated with the other things that uh, exist in your environment and, and not because they're trying to compete with them. Um, and so, you know, I, I think you know, for us, that's really the, the groundwork that leads us to things like uh, you know, a common data model. Let's go express a, a, a common definition of business objects that a lot of people uh, uh, use every day, whether that's accounts or contacts or products or, or what have you. Um, that's why we've invested a, a lot in data integration and connector capabilities in the stack. Uh, you know, the ability to bring data into Dataverse uh, using, uh, you know, Power Query and, and data flows tech that's used by, you know, hundreds of millions of people across the Microsoft stack. Uh, um, uh, you know, it's embedded in Excel, it's all over the place. Um, and the ability to then directly connect, you know, through Power Platform mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, more than 450 services out of the box today and, and any that you want to add on top of it. Um, you know, those are just crucial to be able to, to build within an environment, <laughs> around an environment, and not have to reinvent the wheel every single time. And so, so we see customers using that all, all over the place. I mean, even, gosh, even in Microsoft, you know, we have... Uh, uh, almost the entire company uses Power Apps on a monthly active basis, and there's a number of apps for very specific parts of our operation, whether it's running our data centers or some of our device manufacturing or our sellers or our finance people. And, and a lot of those apps are bringing data together from multiple existing systems. Uh, you know, taking a legacy service that's running on-prem and putting a new cloud-facing front end on it and, and joining that data with data in, in Dataverse. Uh, bringing together month-end close data between SAP, which we're a customer of, and uh, data in Dataverse <laughs> and, and putting that into a mm -hmm. very focused user experience for, uh, you know, for a very individual job function. Uh, those are really common patterns um, uh, that we increasingly see. And it's the value of having a platform that's componentized at every level. Uh, you know, I can I can iterate on the user experience over different data sources uh, and 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 with different logic in the middle. That's really valuable for customers. Yeah. And it's interesting. So Trevor, I mean, so you've taken this platform and you've kind of built a solution on it uh, for the EHS industry. You know, what are some examples that you have seen, you know, with your customers in the EHS space, leverage this capability that we're talking about here, like the common data model and the Dataverse capability mm -hmm. uh, to, to drive differentiation, not only for your solution, but for what they're trying to achieve? You know, I, I, I can think of one, you know, particular example that I think kind of illustrates, um, uh, you know, the, the problem and the opportunity for most companies. And, you know, how many times have each of us gone to a meeting um, and in this case, I was talking with a board member of one of our, our customers and they said, and her comment was to me that she said, you know, for 30 years, I've been going to, you know, you know, senior executive meetings and this and invariably in every one of those conversations, we debate whose data is right. We get into this conversation about whose data is right. Is that Excel sheet right? Is that Excel sheet right? Is that model right? And, you know, kind of utopia all the way along has been to get to a central place. Um, where you could start to 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 really represent that data as efficiently one time as you possibly can. And most companies, well, you know, we'll never get to everywhere one time, but we try to. And I think with Dataverse, you know, the opportunity is to take these disparate pieces and use that connecting um, ecosystem, Ryan, that you talked about, 450 connectors, and and bring all of that together into kind of a central place and, you know, in, in this particular case, you know, it was it was really interesting to see, a, a, you know, this board member reflect and she said, you know, we talked the entire time about what we were trying to do with the data because we trusted it. Mm. And that fact was was really, really powerful to me is that you, you start to get out of this this challenge, right, of, of the, you know, knowing what your your, your true source is. Right. Um, that's a really key p part of it. I think yeah, another like this technology, which is integrating, actually like culminates into into what is really organizational trust, right? Yeah. That, we've right. all been in those meetings where everyone's like, "My data is your, your data," uh, and this really just kind of brings it together in one common source, which is which is very very powerful. Um, one of the other things that I I observed and I wanted to get the th your thoughts on it, both of you, is is you know when we were in the EHS industry, it was it was baffling to me to see how many people had actually 
we're still using pen and paper and digitizing those processes, which is which was which was baffling to me. But but more so than that is that many of them were using Excel to run their EHS programs. And so we were going into them, speaking to them and telling them to come over to a commercial software system to, to go and digitize their EHS management programs. Um, and they were like, well, this is this is, we've invested so much here in these Excel based systems and they're working and they're not broken. And right. and why should we, you know, and, and obviously some of the higher risk organizations did take the plunge but some of the lower risk ones were saying well maybe we it's not, there's, there's no reward here um and 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 it's, it, it causes this inertia you know to digitize this particular part of the of the of the company um and so you know my question to you ryan is really around how can organizations really leverage the power platform and specifically some of the capability around virtual tables and power automated but other capabilities as well to like to, to like to not have to abandon those systems, be able to leverage the data and logic that matters to them uh, in an effective way. Like, are you seeing customers being able to do that with the Power Platform? Hundred um, percent. Look, I mean, Excel is is uh, is is without a doubt still the most widely used business software platform in the enterprise, right? Um, it, uh, it arguably runs, uh, you know, uh, much of our global financial system still, in addition to, uh, you know, many of our of our, of our more, uh, you know, materials intensive industries and processes and whatnot. Um, right. and, and it does for, for a couple of reasons. One, um, you know, not unlike uh, pieces of paper before it, it's very accessible for a lot of people to create stuff in. Um, it's very flexible for them to change stuff in. Um, and everybody has it. It's ubiquitous, right? And so it's it's uh, you know it becomes a, a the barrier to overcoming it with something better is 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 you know pretty high. Um, and now the the interesting thing is you know part of our strategy is not to sort of compete with Excel. <laughs> it's really to actually leverage it directly as a stepping stone into uh, higher sophistication. Because for all that Excel is great. It's not a relational database. It's not an analytical store. It doesn't have business logic in the same way that we would expect it from um, a, a proper a system. There's no way to do uh, DevOps and ALM and source control on an Excel file. You know, I can't. Um, I have very limited capabilities of how I how I govern that. Uh, you know, at, at some level of granularity, um, I'm certainly not really able to do role based access control so that you can see some records and other people can see. There's just there's just a lot of limitations. And 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 frankly, that that not only exposes customers to risk, uh, you know, real tangible business risk if the person that understands how that Excel file was built leaves the company, um, right. but it but it also exposes them to to just a lot of uh, opportunity cost. You know, if I'm if I'm not pulling real analytics out of what I'm, I'm logging in that Excel file, then I'm missing out on a whole other level of visibility into how to improve the business. I'm just recording stuff on a on a day to day basis, and so you know a, a lot of the a lot of the things is okay how do you take what's great about excel the fact that it's available to everybody easy to learn for non-programmers very flexible um, but sort of add to it the qualities that we expect from a business application platform you know it has relational integrity it has analytics it has business logic it has uh, RBAC, all those things um, and 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 be able to work those together. We we think about that deeply at every level of the stack. I mean, we've we recently this year, uh, you know, open sourced what we call PowerFX, which is the programming language behind Power Apps, um, which is a hundred percent based on Excel. In fact, we honor the whole Excel syntax down to the trigonometry functions. You can calculate a cosine in in Power Apps, um, and uh, and 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 then added to that language concepts in the same construct that are specific to application logic and development. You know, we're now extending that project across other aspects of the stack, across Dataverse, across Power Automate, across Power Virtual Agents. Um, there, we've now, you know, even in the in the early beta of our open source package, there's there's other software vendors that are bringing PowerFX into their solutions directly as well. And so, um, you know, the, the, the those are just one example of how we're kind of harnessing and lifting folks with familiar Excel concepts into a, a more modern era. Um, you know, actually, we see less of a pattern of people running production Power App solutions with Excel as a backing data source. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's certainly possible. It's a great way to kind of get started and tinker with Power Apps as a citizen developer. Uh, but it just comes back to Excel was not really built to be a production uh, database. <laughs> it's, it was, it's, it's built to be a spreadsheet, and those are different things. Um, and, and so if you can take some of the concepts that makes it effective, 
and bring them into a higher level of sophistication, uh, then you can serve a lot more people uh, with a lot more value. And that's really the strategy that we've that we've uh, pursued. That makes a lot of sense. And then Trevor, you know, we, we know in the EHS space, I mean, you know, pencil, Excel was the next thing. Uh, and that's where a majority of people sit. I mean, there was a, a survey that we read the other day from Name that said, you know, over, you know, uh, majority of customers are are using Excel over a, over a commercial software system for EHS. Um, but a larger majority, I forget the exact number, were using both, meaning they're using a commercial software system and in combination on the fringes of it using Excel uh, to complete the picture. And so that's just the reality that our customers live in. Um, and so how have you been able to do that with ITR 365 to kind of reconcile that and, and, and really, you know, uh, yeah. reduce the friction there for them? You know, I, I, I kind of look at it as a continuum and you've got, you know, certainly you got, you know, the paper and the excels and they're still going to exist to a certain amount. But the more that we can stamp those out of an organization, the more they're going to be able to see data quicker and faster and secure it and, and share it in a lot of different ways and, and make it an active part of their workflows. So, you know, th those exist as I can look at those as the blueprint. They're kind of a blueprint for what you want in maybe some of the processes. Because again, you know, for the reasons Ryan just mentioned, they're flexible, they're accessible. You can just put something together in Excel really quickly and make it work, and it's it can be good enough. Um, you know, on the other side of the spectrum, then, you know, and and by the way, like you, you say about the Excel stuff, everybody's using. It. You could probably go in every company, and you could probably say 95% or 98% of people use Excel at one point in time if if they're sitting in front of a computer. Um, the other side of the spectrum is, is, you know, those vendors that kind of try and attract you into their world. And again, I, I'm not, what, what they get penalized really quickly with is adoption numbers diving. They, yeah. they just don't get people there because, you know, there's too many departments. Everybody's trying to go to a different place to do what that department wants. We really believe in this kind of concept and, and we've termed it, you know, embedded safety, where we're starting to take the processes that need to be there operationally, the methodologies of, you know, not only how to keep people, keep people safe, but record information fast and effectively and get it to the right people and then bring that together. So that kind of sits in between those. And I think, you know, every time we set up, a, a you know, a, one of these systems, we're working towards that place, you know, Ryan, that you talked about where you've got a relational database, you've got security and roles, you've got consistent business process across the company. And that's where, again, you know, the pro dev kind of environment fits. That's where, you know, you need to have someone who's thinking about it on an enterprise level. But then at the same time, you might have someone who's iterating in Excel. You might have someone who's iterating and building a power app that's interfacing with that, that solution independently and then maybe together with it. Um, that allowing customers to go through that journey and have flexibility when they actually are successful, what we see is adoption numbers that are closer to what Excel has, right. um, where you're seeing 70 and 80 percent of the company using an EHS system. And people go, why does 70, 80 percent of, of, of a company need to use an EHS system? Well, because safety is inherent in what they do. Right. You yeah. know, in, in the world of COVID, you know, you got to check into the office. You need to yep. reach their data. The visibility yep. has to be right up to the executive level if if they, they they get that information. So that's where I I get really really enthusiastic and and excited because that opportunity stretches into affecting every employee and making them more effective. Yeah, yeah, and that, and that gets me into into my my, my next question and the, and the last question for this segment, which is really around user engagement. Right, like we're kind of touching on it right now, and and yeah. you know the most powerful impact you can make with 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 technology is when you have users embrace it and use it in their day to day, um, and and so connecting that into their workflows and how they work and is is a really really important priority, and it's and I, quite honestly is the Achilles heel why many of these products fail, not just in EHS but even, even outside, right? So, you know, um, you know, Ryan, like, how are, are you starting to see? Um, you know how power platform customers are able to like leverage into collaboration tools such as teams and office 365 to go and drive that higher level of engagement yeah that's that's one of the huge structural advantages to solutions that are built on power platform in the context of the broader microsoft cloud which is 
gosh, hundreds of millions of information workers are using that front door every single day. Uh, yeah, they're logging in with their Active Directory identity. They're landing into Teams or they're landing into Office 365 or they're landing into, into, into places where a power platform is natively integrated and can, even in the, in the case of Teams, be targeted and pushed to specific populations of workers, uh, you know, just show up on their left rail, uh, you know, for, for really high visibility apps. And so the, the discovery friction goes way down <laughs> and, and, you know, Teams really becomes much more than a chat and collaboration surface. It becomes yeah. sort of a, 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 a workplace, a digital workplace, and, 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 and not just for remote workers or, or folks who have been affected by the last 18 months, but, but even for frontline workers, you know, who just need one app to pop up on their phone where they can get a shift, chat with their colleagues and, and find their, their, their core process applications embedded right there. Um, and so, you know, we're at a point where now, you know, significant double digit percentage of all power apps usage is happening inside of teams. There are certain fortune 500 organizations that, you know, more than half of their monthly active teams user base is using a power app uh, of some kind embedded in teams. Um, and so, you know, it's just very common and increasingly common pattern from a delivery mechanism perspective uh, to just put those pieces of business process where people are already working. Uh, you know, and sometimes it's not just finding the rectangle of an application, it's also pushing the push notification, adding a bot, you know, pushing a, a, an automated approval, um, you know, really getting seamlessly woven into the fabric of what, you know, the vast majority of our workforce is doing every day. Uh, you know, just really big advantage over, hey, remember to come to this URL <laughs> or, or let me try to yeah. sideload something onto your uh, onto your phone that you've never heard of. And I hope you, you launch it again. Um, you know, you're, you're spot on that you can build the best software in the world. But if people don't come back to use it, uh, you know, what's it worth? <laughs> so um, <laughs> You got I mean, Trevor, I mean, that's that's what I noticed Trevor, in our discussions, even when, when when you showed me some of that, those numbers on your adoption data, you know, uh, from your customers on the EHS app that you guys have, right? Like, I mean, I think that was very differentiating, uh, you know, and in my experience, at least, you know, EHS management systems were relegated to the EHS people that just woke up every day thinking about it. And one of the challenges they had was really just getting everybody to start inputting data in there in a way that's gonna make change in the organization and build a safety culture, as they used to call it. Um, and so how are you seeing that? How are you seeing them connecting iTrack into their core collaboration systems to drive that advantage, that adoption advantage? Yeah, well, I would look at it at a couple levels. I would first look at it and say from a, an organization that builds software, mm -hmm. uh, when we saw Teams and, you know, the, the interconnectivity that came from Power Platform and Teams, um, we were elated because essentially we, we had a transactional system for operational data. Um, and all of a sudden we added an entire collaboration suite. So as application development company, we come in and go, hey, we put a few developers on this for a few months, you know, early and, you know, when some of this was released, you know, as, as a part of the team's, um, you know, initiatives um, early last year. And boom, we've all of a sudden got that embedded in our software where we took, we added an entire suite of capability. But let's make it more practical, right? You know, if we look at it from a practical business user standpoint, you know, what do people do with safety? Well, maybe you have an incident. You know, it's not a good thing. Companies don't want to do it. But what do you, when you record an incident, what are you doing? You're recording so that you can get better and avoid it the next time. So if you have that available in Teams and it shows up inherently just in there, you don't even know that you're using iTrack. That's fine. You're, it's inherently there. But then there's a lot of workflows that flow from that going, hey, you know, we're discovering a trend here. We're seeing risk here. We're doing this. We maybe need to spin off a couple of chat, you know, uh, channels to be able to have that conversation. Um, you know, so the fact that you can add collaboration that way and just have those building blocks as an ISV, as a software vendor, it's incredibly powerful. And in, in fact, I would I would go so far, and you know, we talked about this in some other parts of this series, that it's really changing the game of, of how people are building software in a different way. And some of the vendors where they're saying, "Hey, we're a separate system. Come use us." I think the model's a bit dated and uh, I think it's going to be challenged because companies have to justify the investment. If they say, hey, we're getting 15 percent adoption and we're paying all this dollar, do we have to find a different way of doing that? And can we extend the investments we have in something like, you know, the Microsoft Cloud Platform and get people using it this active way um, that it really changes how they operate every day? That's that's I think what we're after. 
Absolutely. No, and I know we're coming up at the at, at the at the uh, at the time limit here, and and I I really think we can talk about this forever. Um, but I did I did want to thank you know both of you, both uh, Ryan uh, and and Trevor for just you know helping us start this dialogue. You know, um, you know, uh, Ryan. I mean, we're we're you know Trevor's definitely a fan. He bet the farm on on the on the power platform. So <laughs> I hope that you guys, can, he's part of the ISB Connect program, so you guys will continue to connect, but. Um, if there's any parting words that you would like to leave our audience um, in terms of how they should be thinking about leveraging the power platform and to take it to the next level, what would they be? Um, uh, well, thank you. Thank you both for the for the chance to be here. I think as a parting word, it's just a really exciting time to be in this business together. <laughs> you know, I think yeah. we're, we're sort of standing on the precipice of the next major paradigm shift in 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 business software. And and you know, the last one was moving things to the cloud. The next one is really really changing the mix of of what I can do there and who can do it. And uh, and it's really cool to be working with folks that are on the front lines of that who saw it coming early um, and are continuing to push the boundary of of what that farm can do. So we are we are all in uh, to to be successful here together. That's awesome. Trevor, any parting words? Yeah, I uh, I think it all comes back and, and maybe it's it sounds like a, a you know a trivial comment. You know, we talk about like uh, Ryan, you said stuff about digital transformation. It's great marketing slides. It's you know stuff like that. Great to talk on a, on a stage. I think it comes down to just seeing businesses operate more efficiently. It's really that simple. When you see an organization and they can use an app to collect data, and all of a sudden. You know, they got two or three thousand people in the field and they're connected into their business in a different way. And all of a sudden management and the people around the business see have access to those workflows that are happening of someone walking around a job site of a construction or a mill or a mine or, or an, uh, you know, an energy platform. That to me is what what's, you know, so exciting because it just gives that opportunity to help that organization see data and take data into information and start to make it into real you know knowledge that they can interpret and analyze and get better um so that's that's been utopia for back from computer science school 30 years ago everybody wanted that but we couldn't do it without the right players and and i think what microsoft's been able to give us is that underlying platform and then us you know, being able to build on top of it uh you know bring some of the industry expertise so i agree with you ryan 100 percent. it's a it's a it's a, it's a huge uh, opportunity that we're at, and you know, um, very exciting to see some of the developments that come from it. Awesome. Amazing. Well, hey, th thanks, thank you both for being on the on the uh, interview today, uh, Ryan. I hope we can keep in touch with you and, and have you back on as we kind of develop down this journey. Uh, and Trevor, uh, you know, keep uh, you know keep uh, pushing the uh, the agenda here from in the EHS industry. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Jens. Be well. Cheers. Thank you. Bye now.